uh before we begin can someone please confirm if i am audible if it's clear you can put it up on the chat box or just let me know if it's clear okay thank you all right so uh we'll start with today's session hello everyone i am tanya krishna kumar and i'll be taking an introduction to of air class stability and control for today so let's just start uh, so before we begin just a brief intro about myself i have done my btech in aerospace engineering from alliance university in bangalore uh, i'm currently pursuing my phd in flight mechanics and control at iit kanpur uh, my research area is very broadly the control of satellites for rendezvous and docking all right so we'll start with aircraft stability and control just the introduction and maybe do a few questions to see where we stand and then i'll try to introduce a few concepts it may be a little too much for the first session but uh, you can stop me whenever you want to and we can discuss all right so uh, before we start exactly what stability is what control is and all of that just a brief recap of airfoil nomenclature just so that we are up to date and we're on the same terms so this is just the cross section of a wing is the airfoil this is the shape that we use uh, for an airfoil for a wing the cross section right so you have the leading edge which is the first point of contact with the oncoming airflow and the trailing edge which is the last point uh, that the airflow uh, passes over okay then you have a chord line and camber line can someone tell me what the chord line is what is a chord line joins leading edge and trailing edge yes so a straight line joining the leading edge and the trailing edge is the chord line what is camber camber line what about that so the dashed line in green here is the mean camber line so what do you understand by camber or camber line any anything whatever you have learned so far or whatever you think it is even from the diagram midpoint from top and bottom at all locations yes so a line that is equidistant from the upper surface and the lower surface gives you the uh, mean camber line and so you have the location of maximum camber line just as per the definition it is the location which gives you the maximum distance between the uh, mean camber line and the chord line then you have location of maximum thickness uh, and maximum thickness which is just Uh, as the name suggests okay so this is just a brief recap of the nomenclature airfoil nomenclature all right so there are different types of airfoils you have symmetric positively cambered negatively cambered reflex so symmetric is when uh, the upper surface and the lower surface have similar profiles so what happens there is that your mean camber line and your chord line are coincident right so they are the same uh, they follow the same line then when you have a positively cambered airfoil the one that's shown here is in fact a positively cambered airfoil so you have the mean um, camber line that is slightly above it's a curved line above the chord line which is the opposite case for a negatively cambered airfoil all right does anyone know what a reflexed airfoil is reflex any idea what reflex is this is a positively cambered one camber at the trailing edge all right yes so i'm not sure if i can draw it as uh, effectively so it's has an upward camber towards the trailing edge all right something like this so during one of my sessions uh, an interesting definition that one of the students said was that how they defined a reflex airfoil was when the chord line intersects the airfoil at two locations so it intersects at the trailing edge and somewhere in the middle right so intersects the camber line or intersects the surface of the airfoil at two locations so that's how that student had defined reflex airfoil i thought it was very interesting any idea where this is used reflex airfoils what are the benefits or why is it used or where is it used yeah 
flying wing yes okay so we'll get into the specifics a little later into this course but yes flying wing is one of the places where reflex airfoil is used uh, it is to ensure stability and ensure a positive uh, trim angle of attack we'll get into the details a little later in this course but yes flying wing it's an interesting concept do look it up when you have the time okay all right okay so what do you understand by the term stability not just for an aircraft so what do you understand by the term stability in general what comes to your mind when we say stability equilibrium yes that is a key word so equilibrium anything else force balance okay okay safety stability safety okay so you've all studied a typical second order system right so if you take a spring mass damper system uh, in terms of that can you or any physical system can you try to internal resistance yes so yes so the uh, ability to resist change or the tendency to resist change that was something that i was looking for so internal resistance or something to resist change resist change all right so if some if say just a block is resting on a surface and it has an ability to resist any external force acting on it it is the stability so the tendency to resist any change tendency to re uh, resist any disturbance some that is the basic idea of stability so one of the typical examples that all of these courses uh, begin with all stability control courses begin with i'll also take up the same example so take a bowl okay so let's just take a small bowl and imagine that there is a ball in it so now if i push this ball to either side over time it is going to come back so if it is just here in the middle it will remain there right so it is a position of equilibrium so the one that i've drawn right now is a position of equilibrium and if i were to displace it slightly even slightly to either side it will oscillate about the equilibrium point and eventually come back to its equilibrium point so this ability or tendency to return to the equilibrium point is called a stability so this is a stable system right so this is stable now the same case if i were to invert the bowl so if i make it like this and then i place a ball exactly on top middle of it exactly over there at this point it is in equilibrium right so the ball is perfectly stationed at the middle of the bowl and it is in equilibrium but in this case if i slightly push the ball to any side it will go away from the equilibrium point and will not show any tendency to come back to the equilibrium point hence the system is unstable so this is an unstable system it goes away from the equilibrium point now if you take a flat surface a flat surface and i place the ball here on the surface this again is at equilibrium now when i displace the ball to any one side what will happen so if i push it to the right or the left slightly neutral yes so it will attain its new equilibrium at the new point it will move to the new location correct and the new location will be its new equilibrium point okay so it you can't call it stable you can't call it unstable it's called neutrally stable neutrally stable okay now let's move into something known as static versus dynamic stability so all of these were or if the system shows a tendency to go towards the equilibrium point now what happens over a period of time does it actually go back to its equilibrium point or does it deviate further from its equilibrium point right so uh, i had taken the spring mass damper so i let's write that equation so x double dot plus kx plus c is this the equation or let's just take this to be any equation right let's just take this to be a simple uh, differential equation now the k term here is the one that resists this change right so the resistance towards any change or the uh, reason why it tries to go back to equilibrium point or the stiffness is the k now you have something known as the damping right 
what does this damping do it takes the system towards equilibrium or takes it away from equilibrium over a period of time so now if i take uh, any system so if let me just draw the graph the response right so if the system is at equilibrium and this is the x axis is time and the y axis you can take any displacement let's just take x all right so now if i were to disturb a system and maybe push it away how it behaves over time gives you a, a figure or the analysis of the dynamic stability now if it were to oscillate about the equilibrium point right it continues with same amplitude oscillations this is one is one of the natures of how the system would behave another way is that let me just draw that again if i disturb it and it continues to go away from the equilibrium point this is one way it could behave another way which we prefer is that upon uh, disturbance or deviation from equilibrium point it should over time come back to its equilibrium point right so this is what is desired you want it to go back to equilibrium so the last curve that i've drawn is dynamically stable system right if it does come back towards equilibrium point over a period of time then it is dynamically stable so we will discuss in depth about the static and the dynamic stability that pertains to the aircraft uh, so this was just to give you a brief idea of uh, what stability is the notions of stability different kinds of stability now that we have seen this can you tell me what how you would describe the stability of an aircraft let's just take longitudinal or any axis about any axis how would you describe or uh, define the stability of an aircraft dynamically stable we will be seeing if so aircraft is another system another physical system whose stability we will be analyzing throughout this course the static stability and the dynamic stability separately so i just want you to try and tell me how you would go about defining uh, the stability of an aircraft maintain its attitude okay okay maintaining level flight even after a gust hit okay moment slope should be negative perfect that is how you define the longitudinal stability all right so if i take let me just take the pitch dynamics okay so if this is my fuselage reference line in the pitch dynamics we'll get to uh, the ability to restore moment comes to equilibrium even after it's disturbed okay all of these are right notions of stability when it pertains to aircraft okay let's so let's just imagine that this is your fuselage reference line okay so it's flying at zero angle of attack oncoming velocity is here this is your oncoming velocity and the straight line that i've drawn is your fuselage reference line now suppose that it is subject to a gust so you have a vertical gust that comes from here and it deviates as such about its cg all right so this is your cg and it deviates due to a gust now if the aircraft is stable how will it behave and if it's unstable how will it behave just some idea what what do you think would happen if it is stable if it is unstable pitch down for stable more pitch if unstable perfect so if it is stable it will try to come back to its equilibrium point right so you will have a moment like this this is for stable so if the aircraft is stable it will try to regain its equilibrium point it will have a tendency to come towards its its original equilibrium point correct so this is right so pitch down gives you uh, a stable aircraft so now uh, although you people are uh, talking in terms of pitch and the axis so i'll just thought uh, we'll get familiarized with the aircraft axis before we delve into uh, the stability as such so according to our conventions we have three axes of, of an aircraft we have the roll axis pitch axis and yaw axis so roll axis is considered x axis pitch axis towards your uh, right wing is your y axis positive y axis and yaw axis is vertically downwards all right and how do we get positive uh, rotations about each of these axes point your thumb in the positive axis and the direction in which your fingers curl give you the positive rotation 
So the positive rotations in the three uh, axes are shown in this figure. So you have the positive roll, which is rolling towards your right. Pitch is a positive pitch is pitch up, negative pitch is pitch down. Yaw is uh, clockwise is positive, anti-clockwise is negative, okay? So this is just the convention that we follow. X axis is roll axis, Y pitch and Z is yaw, okay? So this is just to familiarize yourself. You must have already done uh, with this in the previous course, uh, in the previous uh, systems. So this is just to recap, all right. Okay, so now uh, we have some terms that will be used when, when we start with the static longitudinal stability. So longitudinal stability is about your, uh, which axis do you think longitudinal stability we will be discussing? When I say longitudinal stability of an aircraft, uh, about which axis would it be? Pitch axis, correct. So the fuse, it's the pitch axis, okay? So I think a couple of you have gotten roll, but the longitudinal stability is the motion about your pitch axis. Pitch up, pitch down, that is your longitudinal motion. All right, so longitudinal axis is your pitch axis. Longitudinal stability axis, okay. All right, so aerodynamic center is a term that we'll be, we will be using to analyze the longitudinal, static longitudinal stability of an aircraft. Can Before looking at the slides, can you do any of you have any idea what aerodynamic center is? I have written the definition on the slides, but do you have any idea of your own? Point at which moment is zero. Point at which moment is zero is not correct. The point at which the pitching moment is constant, yes. So one of you've got it right. The pitching moment is independent of angle of attack at the aerodynamic center. Why is this important now? So your aerodynamic forces, are, what are your aer aerodynamic forces that help the aircraft move? And what are the aerodynamic forces acting on the aircraft? Lift and drag, yeah. So about which point does the lift and drag act? Does it act about the aerodynamic center? Just try a brief recap of your aerodynamics. Where does the lift and drag, where do your aerodynamic forces act? So if I were to draw an airfoil, so I just draw uh, an airfoil here. Right? So you have lift and drag forces acting when this airfoil moves in uh, oncoming velocity, right? So Yes, so one of you have said the right answer. I think Lohit has said center of pressure. So exactly, so center of pressure is where your lift and drag, your aerodynamic forces act at your center of pressure, right? So you remember that we had a graph, something like this. This shows your pressure profile. So on the upper surface, you have a negative pressure profile. Lower surface, you have a positive pressure profile. This is what generates your lift and drag. I hope you remember a uh, figure, something similar to this. So this is your pressure profile, right? So now the same airfoil, if I increase the angle of attack, how will the pressure profile change? So if I go something like this, right? So your pressure profile also changes. It becomes something like this. Correct, do you remember this? I think this was dealt with in aerodynamics. So as and when your angle of attack changes, the pressure profile changes, and hence your lift and drag also change, right? So lift and drag are dependent on the angle of attack. This changes because your pressure profile changes. And when the pressure profile changes, what happens is that your center of pressure, so center of pressure for uh, this figure would be somewhere here, and then it would move ahead. When I increase angle of attack, center of pressure also moves along with it. So then uh, the analysis, to perform analysis about this point becomes a little difficult. It becomes tricky because at each point, your center of pressure keeps changing. So that is where this aerodynamic center comes into play. So that is why we uh, coined this term. So aerodynamic center is the point about which the pitching moment is independent of angle of attack. So it remains constant throughout your flight profile. 
So it makes our analysis of the uh, longitudinal stability, longitudinal forces acting in the in that plane far easier than if we had to consider the center of pressure. So let's just take another air foil. I'll just draw it here. So imagine this to be your center of pressure. So that is where your lift and drag are acting. Let me take another color. You have lift and drag. So, and this is your aerodynamic center. Now we need to perform our analysis about the aerodynamic center. That means we need to transfer the forces at the center of pressure to the aerodynamic center, right? So when I transfer these forces to the aerodynamic center, it also comes with a moment, correct? So you have lift, drag, and it also has a moment, right? So you must always remember that all of these airfoils at the aerodynamic center, it will also have an inherent moment, pitching moment. So can you tell me what would be the case for symmetric or positively cambered? Will it be a positive moment, negative moment, or zero moment? Let's just take first for a symmetric airfoil. Or the one, okay, let's take the one that I've drawn right here. Will it be a positive or a negative moment at the aerodynamic center? When I transfer the forces, it comes with a moment. Okay, so the moment here will be in the pitch down direction, correct? It will be nose down. It will be in this direction, correct? So according to our convention, pitch down is negative. So for a positively cambered airfoil, when I transfer the forces from the center of pressure to the aerodynamic center, I have a pitch down moment at the aerodynamic center, okay? So for a negatively cambered, it will be the reverse. So just try to remember this, or you can just easily draw this figure and you'll get it immediately. Just remember your sign conventions, right? So pitch down is negative. Okay. So now uh, when we started with stability, I'm, the first word, uh, yes. I had one doubt, like uh, at the aerodynamic center, you have drawn one moment and one is outside. Yes. Are they both different? Same. I just, okay, I'll just erase that. That was just to show the, okay. Right, so that moment will be negative. I just intended to show that. At the aerodynamic center, the moment that the positively cambered airfoil will have is negative. Okay. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to show the direction. All right. So, yeah, uh, the first word that came up when we dealt with stability in the chat was equilibrium. So, when it comes to aircraft, the term that we use for equilibrium is also called trim, where the net forces and the moments are zero. Can you briefly explain the difference between aerodynamic center and center? Of okay, so center of pressure is the point at which your lift and drag are acting. And aerodynamic center is the point at which we do our analysis because it remains constant. To make our lives easier, to make the analysis convenient, we came up with aerodynamic center. Now, when we do the analysis about another point, we need to transfer the lift and drag forces to that point to do our analysis. The lift and drag are not actually being transferred. It is actually acting at the center of pressure. But for our analysis, we will transfer it. And hence, it comes with a moment. OK, uh, is that clear? Does that change the value of lift and drag? No, no. So I think we have dealt with this in structures or some other course. We just transfer the forces there. It also comes with a moment. The value of lift and drag remain the same and in the same direction. It just comes with an additional moment. And yeah, so I was discussing this for a symmetrical airfoil. There will not be any moment because your center of pressure and aerodynamic center are at the same point for a symmetric airfoil. All right. I hope that's clear. All right, okay. Okay, so what uh, comes to your mind when I say equilibrium in the longitudinal sense, sense for an aircraft? So trim are, is when the net forces and net moments are zero. So what is the uh, one condition where you can uh, say that the aircraft is at trim? Does there exist any point where the moment is zero? 
Yes. So for a symmetrical airfoil, uh, at aerodynamic center, there will be zero moment, right? Similarly, there will be other points about the airfoil. So if it so happens that the center of pressure is at the aerodynamic center, it will be zero. Otherwise, it will not be zero. Correct? Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? OK. All right. CP has no, no, because the forces are acting at the CP, there is no moment ever. There is no pitching moment, all right? This is all only in the longitudinal plane. There is no pitching moment at the CP, no. All right. So can you tell me what uh, the equilibrium state for or a trim state for aircraft would be? I think in the previous chat, somebody had uh, come up with it. Moment zero force balance, yes. So there's something about a level flight. So lift equal to weight and thrust equal to drag. Steady level flight. I think somebody had mentioned it a little before. So that is one condition where your aircraft is at trim or is in equilibrium. Steady level flight where a lift equals weight and thrust equals drag, okay? So this is one point about which we'll be uh, considering trim and equilibrium, all right? So any deviation from this equilibrium will uh, lead to uh, analysis of stability. Like, does it come back to this equilibrium or does it stay uh, at the new position, all right? Okay, pitching moment convention, we had just discussed when we saw the axis, nose up is positive, nose down is negative. You need to remember this. If not, you can just use the right hand rule, point your thumb along the positive uh, Y axis, positive pitch axis, and the direction of curl of your fingers is uh, positive rotation, all right? So that is nose up is positive. Okay, now comes the main equation for uh, analyzing the static longitudinal stability of an aircraft. It's a linearized equation. It's a linear equation. It is CM is CM naught plus BCM by D alpha into alpha. So this is an equation for a straight line. This is a y equal to mx plus c, right? So this is the only equation that all the other equations will fall into this pattern. And then it will help you analyze the stability of your aircraft, all right? So uh, like somebody had mentioned initially, the only condition to analyze, uh, analyze the static longitudinal stability of an aircraft is that your BCM, oops. So your DCM upon D alpha, the slope of this line must be negative. Why should it be negative? So I think we had drawn this. Where was the fuselage reference line? Just a moment. Yeah. So you remember this fuselage reference line that we drew, and I said that upon a gust, it is deviated upwards, right? And the restoring moment here was negative. Pitch down, right? Restoring moment here was negative is that clear so for a positive delta alpha your restoring moment is negative you have negative cm is this clear is this uh, did everybody understand this due to a gust if there is a positive change in angle of attack the restoring moment required is negative okay this is something that you uh, should be clear with before we proceed into the larger derivations so I hope this concept is clear. So for a positive change in angle of attack or a positive disturbance, you need the restoring moment should be negative. This is why the condition for static stability is that BCM upon D alpha should be negative. I hope this is clear for everyone. Uh, if it's not clear, please do ask me. We can go over it again. All right, I think it's clear. We'll move on. All right. So the only condition for static longitudinal stability is that your BCM upon D alpha. So the graph will look something like this where this is cm and this is alpha so this is the graph pattern for a longitudinally 
statically longitudinally stable aircraft okay the cm should be uh, dcm upon d alpha should be less than 0 this is the graph for a stable aircraft now another condition that we often encounter is that cm not should be greater than 0 what is cm not cm not is where it intersects the y axis so this is cm not so this condition is in no way related to stability okay so we have only one condition for static longitudinal stability and that is the slope must be negative the condition for cm not greater than 0 is only to ensure that you trim the aircraft at a positive angle of attack at trim what happens what happens at trim the net forces and net moments are zero so in this graph your trim is happening at this location correct i'll just take another color so this is trim yes everybody agrees with me so at this trim you can see that your alpha is a positive quantity now if your cm cm not was negative something like this right so there the trim would be here and your angle of attack would be negative so it is preferable for us to trim our aircraft at a positive angle of attack so this cm not greater than 0 is a condition only to ensure that you are trimming your aircraft or your equilibrium point is happening at a positive angle of attack this is just a desirable quality it's not necessary it's not mandatory for stability at all only condition mandatory for stability is that the slope of the graph must be negative now how do we ensure the cm not greater than 0 what are the different ways in which we can have a positive cm not so according to this figure that i drew here we can see that if it's a positively cambered airfoil uh, your cm at the ac is inherently negative and it is almost always we use a positively cambered airfoil for your wing correct if cp is behind ac your cm not is always negative clear is that's clear for everyone cp behind ac means your cm not is negative so how do we ensure a uh, cm not greater than 0 there are a few ways but what comes at the top of your head okay we need to have cp ahead of the ac how do we ensure that we had discussed something uh, similar uh, towards the beginning of this session just think about it so if your cp is ahead of the ac then your moment at aerodynamic center will be positive correct so how do we ensure cp is ahead by horizontal stabilizer negative camber yes negative camber is a, a valid response but if it's negative camber then your wing will not generate enough lift for it to fly so you almost always have yes reflex airfoil is one such uh, airfoil where your cp is either at ac or slightly ahead of the ac yes so reflex airfoil is one way in which you can ensure cm not greater than 0 another way is something that we'll come up a uh, little later in the session uh, when we do the derivations for the wing and the tail contributions all right so one way is reflex airfoil keep this question in mind and we'll uh, deal with it a little later okay now let's start with a few questions just to see where we stand so which one is correct about the aerodynamic center of an aircraft it depends on the location of center of gravity it does not depend on the location of center of gravity it depends upon the neutral point none of these we haven't started with neutral point as such uh, but this is just to assess where we all stand b okay b so when it says uh, it does not depend or it depends on the location of center of gravity one of them have to be has to be true right it either depends or it doesn't depend which is it yes so it does not depend on the location of center of gravity aerodynamic center by definition is the point at which your pitching moment is independent of angle of attack it has nothing to do with the center of gravity it has nothing to do with any other property so it does not depend on the location of center of gravity correct so uh, that would be 
right answer. Okay. As the aspect ratio of a wing increases, the lift curve slope will. So what was aspect ratio? AR, the formula for AR. What was aspect ratio? B squared by S, yes. All right. So as the aspect ratio of a wing decreases, will the lift curve slope increase, decrease, remain same, or has no effect? OK. Just take a few seconds to think about it. P is the right answer. So let me just draw the lift curve slope. This is CL versus alpha. I will just take a Cambridge at five. So I hope everybody is aware of how the lift curve will be for a symmetric and a positively Cambridge at five, right? So I'll just draw it for a little separate. So this is for a symmetric at five, and this is for a positively Cambridge at five. What is the difference? This is symmetric. This is positively Cambridge. Yeah, so for a positively cambered airfoil, lift is generated even at zero angle of attack, right? Which is desirable for wings. Yes, okay, so you're all aware of that. So, okay, let's get back to this question. So when I say you have a couple of curves like this, all right? So for if I say aspect ratio is infinite, what does it mean? airfoil yes and then why is it infinite for an airfoil you can just take uh, the formula right b squared by s and airfoil is a wing of infinite uh, length infinite span right okay so let's just take this to be as aspect ratio 10 and this to be aspect ratio 5 so this is how the lift curve slope behaves with the change in angle of uh, with Aspect ratio. So B, like all of you said, is the right response. Why does this happen? So why? Let's just take airfoil and uh, some wing. So this is this is one and this is two. If I just compare an airfoil and a wing, how, why do you think uh, the lift curve slope decreases when I go from an airfoil to a wing? When I go from infinite length to a finite length? So many of you said decreases, which is the right answer. But can you? Wingtip vortices, perfect. So what are wingtip vortices? And use drag. Perfect. So wingtip vortices, they occur when uh, the flow below the surface of the wing and above the surface of the wing, they interact at the tip. Right? They interact at the tip and it forms vortices. So these are the wingtip vortices. What, what happens is that these wingtip vortices reduce the effective angle of attack at the tip. And hence, uh, it's not the wing is not able to produce as much lift as it should have. So since the airfoil is of infinite span, there is no tip as such, and there is no interaction of the flow above and below the surfaces. And so there are no wingtip vortices. And so the design CL is achieved, right? So when I have the same airfoil for a wing of finite uh, length, I'm not able to achieve the same lift because the effective angle of attack is reduced. And hence, the, there is a decrease in the lift curve slope. So for the same angle of attack, for a airfoil, it gives you a very high lift. But as the span is, uh, like as the aspect ratio is reduced, it gives you lesser and lesser lift. This is why your slope is reduced all right this is a, a very simple numerical question for a static stability level a slope of cm versus cl is given as minus 0 0.12 and the pitching moment coefficient at zero lift is equal to 0 0.055 what will the trim lift coefficient be let me just write down what is given to us 
So DCM by DCL is given as minus 0 0.12, right? And the zero lift uh, CM, that is CM naught is given to us as 0 0.055. Now we'd seen that uh, the CM versus alpha curve, so should have negative slope, right? CM versus alpha. Now it follows the same trend for CM versus CL because CL is directly proportional to alpha. So your CM versus CL curve will also look in the same manner, but the value of CM naught will be different. It will follow the same pattern, right? So in this question, they have asked you to use the properties of your CM versus CL curve to get the uh, trim lift coefficient. Just take a few minutes to try and solve this, and then we'll solve it together. They've asked you to find out CL trim. CL trim. At trim, remember that the sum of the forces, sum of the moments are zero. Trim is equilibrium condition. So they've given you the slope and they've given you the y-intercept for this curve. This is the curve that we are going to use. I'll just write the equation of the straight line equation that we had seen. It's similar to that. So CM is CM naught plus DCM by DCL into C. So this is the equation that you should be using. Okay, so somebody has gotten C. Okay, let's just wait for the others to uh, solve it. Remember that although the two graphs are similar in nature, the values of CM0 will not be the same, all right? Slope and uh, CM0, both of them will not be same. They just have the similar pattern. Just a few more seconds, then we'll uh, try solving it. CM0 is given to you, slope is given to you. They've asked you to find the value of CL at trim. All right, a couple of people have always solved it. So let's just uh, go about. So when it's at trim, what do we see? That's CM, the value of coefficient, uh, pitching moment coefficient is zero. So just plug in zero here. And CM0 is given to you directly, 0 0.055. Uh, the slope is, so is this aircraft uh, longitudinally stable or unstable? Static stability. Stable, correct, okay. Why? Because your slope is negative, right? So 0 0.12 and you have CL trim. How did it become CL trim? I just plugged in CM to be zero. So at trim, CM is zero. Now, if you solve this equation, you get CL trim to be 0.458. So I'm getting 0.45833. Yeah, so I think a couple of you have already gotten C. And that's the right answer. All right, I hope this is clear to everyone. Does anybody have any questions? All right, let's move on. Not getting by CM not. Uh, I'm not sure what, 
uh, Das, I, I did not understand what uh, you meant by the question. Can you elaborate? Why CM equal to zero? Okay, okay, right, okay. So at trim, what happens is that trim is your equilibrium point. At that point, your sum of forces and moments are zero. So here there is no force in our equation. So your pitching moment at trim, uh, pitching moment, equals zero. Correct? This is by definition. This is how we've defined the trim condition. So this is the point at which uh, your aircraft is trimmed. The one that I've marked here, this is your trim point. So value at CL at trim uh, in the pre, okay, let me just finish this, yeah. So value of CL at trim is what they've asked you to find out. I hope uh, thus, is this clear? straight line equation the value of trim is what they've asked trim is when your pitching moment is zero okay i think he's offline so let's just okay uh in the previous question does different aspect ratio also affect the max cl alpha yes so let me just go back to that graph so you can see that uh as the aspect ratio reduces your max cl so this point also reduces right CL max also comes down. Where does the trim point lie on the longitudinal axis? It depends on the airfoil that you've chosen. And it depends on the uh, moments acting on it, right? So you can just take the equation and you can find out. All right. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, uh, Satvik, can you just please elaborate your question? So max CL is this point, right? That is your max seal. Uh, does the alpha also decrease for different aspect ratio at max seal? Does the, okay, okay, yeah. So it slightly decreases for uh, when, so I don't think it's very clear here, but it is not as affected by the aspect ratio as a seal. Seal is directly affected by it, correct? But you, it, it is negligible, you can neglect it. All right, okay. Okay, uh, stalls normally occur on which part of the wing first? What are stalls? What is when the, when, we, when do you say the aircraft is stalled? Loss in lift, okay, sudden loss in lift, okay. What else do you understand by stall? Low separation, more than CL max. Yes, perfect. So your, uh, if this is your CL versus alpha, anything beyond this point, that is your stall. Correct? Perfect. Okay. So now try and answer this question. Stalls normally occur on which part of the wing first? Wing tip, wing root, wing midsection, or none of these? All right, so uh, can you elaborate your answers? So somebody has said A, we have all three, right? A, B, C, can you elaborate your answers? Let's start with A, Devansh, you said uh, A. Can you uh, give a reasoning? Just why did you uh, come up with A, why do you think? You had told effective angle of attack. Uh, okay. 
downwards cause is loss in lift. All right, okay. I think all three of you have elaborated. I think somebody has said midsection Sahil. Can you uh, give your reasoning too? And then we'll go with what the right answer is and what the reasoning is. Okay, uh, okay, he's still typing, all right. We'll just wait for a little while. Flow starts losing, but I think, all right, okay. So the right answer is uh, wing root. Let's see why, okay. So if throughout the wing cross section, if it has the same angle of attack, then it will stall uniformly. But as I had mentioned earlier, the wingtip vortices, uh, they reduce the effect. So Lohit had mentioned this. So they reduce the effective angle of attack at the wingtip. So what happens is that this max alpha is what, if the entire uh, wing has reached max alpha, then it would have stalled. But this max alpha is reduced at the wingtip due to the vortices. So there is a reduction in the effective angle of attack at the wingtip. And hence, the wing root will be stalled first. Right? Is this uh, reasoning legit? Like, can you are you able to follow? So the effective angle of attack at the wing tip is reduced due to wing tip vortices, and hence this alpha stall is not reached. It's not reached first. Yes, it's abrupt stall. Yes, exactly. That's why twist is given. So that you have a uniform angle of attack that every cross section of the wing, in the hopes that every cross section of the wing is given, is uh, seen the same angle of attack. So it it will, uh, no part of the wing will stall uh, differently. That's why the wing twist is given. Yes. I hope this is clear. The reasoning is clear. So wing root is the right answer because the effective angle of attack at the wing tip is reduced, the stall angle is not uh, achieved when the root is also achieving it. All right, there's a reduction. All right. Next question. If a wing is made of symmetric airfoil, the pitching moment coefficient at zero degree angle of attack will be. We had discussed this, right? Okay, so I think the third option, this, this doesn't make sense. It should be zero and this should be negative. Sorry about that. Yeah, so which will be the right answer? Zero, yes, correct. So uh, for a symmetric airfoil, your CP at the center of pressure and aerodynamic center are at the same point. So when we transfer the forces, it does not come with a moment, so there is no Pitching moment for a symmetric airfoil. CM not equal to zero for a symmetric airfoil. All right. Okay. So now let's just uh, jump into the actual uh, equations that are going to be used for longitudinal stability. I had planned on deriving these, but I'm not sure if I have time for that. So we'll just look at the equations today and then uh, we'll derive it. Uh, completely so that no matter what system is given to you, you will be able to come up with the equations and do the analysis. All right, so let's just familiarize ourselves with these uh, terms for today and then we'll derive it in a complete fashion. Okay, so the first term CMCG, that is the pitching moment at the CG. CMACW is the pitching moment at the aerodynamic center of the wing. CL0 is your CL versus alpha, the curve, so you have CL0 and uh, CL alpha that you're familiar with. XCG is the distance of the CG location along the X axis or along any uh, reference line. So in our case, it is the fuselage reference line. 
So location of the CG from some reference point. So let me just take uh, this to be the fuselage reference line. And let's just say this is my wing cross section and say my tail is somewhere here. And this is your CG. So uh, usually the reference point that we take is the wing leading edge, all right? So you can take any reference line, but this is what is generally used. So this distance is XCG. Okay. XCG, right? Uh, similarly, XAC wing is the distance from the leading edge to the aerodynamic center of the wing. So if your aerodynamic center is somewhere here, this is your XAC wing. Similarly, you have it for the tail. All right. So in the first equation, are all the terms clear? Are you familiar with all the terms now? Okay. Similarly, you have the tail contribution. This was the wing contribution. You have a tail contribution. I'll uh, go into how it comes into play in the stability equation, but let's just familiarize ourselves with the terms. So I think this would be a little better if we did the derivation. So Let's just see a familiar term. So the CL alpha tail, you know, from the lift curve slope of the uh, tail, IW is the wing setting angle. The angle at which your, uh, the angle that your cord line makes with the fuselage reference line. So that is your wing setting angle. Similarly, you have tail setting angle. All right. Uh, yes. So this epsilon naught and rho epsilon by rho alpha, they come as part of your downwash. So Epsilon is your downwash angle, which is given in a linearized fashion by epsilon by rho alpha into alpha wing. So what was downwash? Can someone recollect and let me know what is downwash? I think a few of you had mentioned downwash a little before in the chat for some other question. What is downwash? Induced velocity, okay. What is downwash? Why do we encounter it? What are its consequences? So you can see that the wakes at the trailing edge. Okay. So you have these, uh, yes, wakes at the trailing edge and you have these wing tip vortices happening at the wing. So now these disturbances travel back towards the tail. And what happens is that there is a change in the uh, angle of attack and the velocity that the tail sees. So the oncoming velocity for the wing and oncoming velocity, the free stream velocity seen by the wing and the tail are different. Right, so the tail lies in the wake region of the wing. So there are disturbances at the wake. There are wing tip vortices. Both of these disturbances travel towards the tail and there is a change in the velocity and the angle of attack that the tail sees, All right? So that is downwash and that is modeled by this equation, okay? So this is the equation that gives you uh, how the uh, downwash changes with angle of attack uh, at the wing. All right. So I hope downwash is clear. So now let's just look how this equation can be related to the equation that we are familiar with. Let me just erase these terms. When we do the derivation, I will uh, write these equations again. So. Just a second. Okay. So now our equation for stability, static longitudinal stability is CM equals CM naught plus the slope CM alpha. BCM by D alpha I've written as CM alpha into alpha wing, right? This is the equation that we have seen. Now, the wing and the tail, each aerodynamic surface on the aircraft contributes towards each of these terms. Okay, so now look, let's look at the wing contribution. This entire thing 
is the cm not contribution of the wing and this thing this term is the cm alpha contribution of the wing all right similarly now let's look at the tail this term is cm not contribution of the tail and this term is the cm alpha contribution of the tail now when we analyze stability we only look at the cm alpha terms so what needs to happen is that cm alpha of wing plus cm alpha of the tail should be negative for your aircraft to be statically longitudinally stable is this clear so the combined cm alpha must be negative each of the aerodynamic surfaces of on the aircraft contribute towards cm not and cm alpha those contributions when it's just a wing and tail i have written here we'll do the derivations in detail uh, maybe in the next session but is this clear just for a basic understanding you uh, we once we derive the equation it will not seem as uh, tedious as it does right now okay then comes another term that we will be using throughout this course is called neutral point so neutral point i've written here is the cg location at which cm alpha is zero now does this definition ring any bells like is it similar to some other definition that we have seen in the beginning of the session cm alpha equal to zero is nothing but your cm remains constant with angle of attack right your pitching moment remains constant with angle of attack does this sound similar to some other ac exactly so neutral point and ac they have the same definitions so how do we define neutral point so aerodynamic center is defined for each aerodynamic surface and neutral point is defined for the entire uh, aircraft so neutral point is like the aerodynamic center of the entire aircraft both of those points have the similar definition aerodynamic center is for individual aerodynamic uh, structures wing tail canard such surfaces the neutral point is for the entire aircraft okay the definition is the same next we have the static margin so this i think will be the last uh, topic for today so static margin is just but why cg the location so uh, so let me okay let's just remember this the point at which cm alpha is zero now if i place my uh, neutral point if i place the cg of my aircraft at such a point what will happen the aircraft will be neutrally stable what does it mean by neutrally stable like we have seen initially right initial when the ball was placed on a flat surface and i move it it attains a new equilibrium point at that position so at if i place my cg at the neutral point the aircraft will be neutrally stable similarly if i take just a, okay let me just if i just take a wing or an airfoil and this is my ac if i place my cg at my ac the wing will also be neutrally stable that is how the name came about neutral point and if i place so a mnemonic that i used to remember is uh, c a n where c stands for cg a stands for aerodynamic center n stands for neutral point so if it's a wing only con configuration then you use this otherwise you use cn what this means is that for stability cg should be ahead of aerodynamic center or cg should be ahead of neutral point and if it is at neutral point the system or the structure will be neutrally stable is that clear so when i had taken my first uh, stability control course uh, the professor had told us that all objects can fly you can make all objects fly you only have to ensure of course you need to have the necessary propulsion systems and all of that but all objects can fly its efficiency will change but all objects can fly you just need to make sure that the cg is ahead of its neutral point or aerodynamic center whichever is uh, the right term in that scenario right so this was the first statement that he had told us in the class and it has stuck with me so cg should be ahead of your ac or neutral point then your object is stable stable enough to fly all right is that clear okay 
So the last uh, topic that we introduced for today is the static margin. What is the static margin? It is a measure of the stability. So till now we have been saying that uh, if CM alpha is less than zero, it is stable. If CM alpha is greater than zero, like it's positive, it is unstable. But we haven't given a quantity. We haven't uh, given a physical or we haven't had a feel for how stable the system is. So now static margin, which is the negative of the slope of CM versus CL, gives you the quantification of stability. So greater the static margin, greater the stability, right? So for a stable aircraft, static margin will be positive, correct? Do you all agree with me? <coughs> Excuse me, okay. So greater the uh, static margin, greater is the stability of your aircraft. Now, similar statement that I can make is that once your aircraft is that stable, that is, it is shows a greater tendency to come back to equilibrium, it becomes a little difficult to maneuver. So more stable the aircraft, less is its maneuverability, right? Do you understand that? All right, okay. So now I had uh, left a few slides for uh, just the derivation. So I'll just skip that and yeah. Okay, this, all of this will make more sense when I do the derivation. So I think, uh, we can try doing this question. So for an aircraft, the CM versus CL plot is shown in the figure. Center of gravity, X bar CG. X bar CG is X bar CG is X CG by C bar, where C bar is mean aerodynamic chord, all right, uh, is 0.28. What is the value of X bar NP? Can you try doing this? Let me just write the static margin equation so it Static margin is minus DCM by DCL. It's also equal to X bar NP minus X bar CG. Can you try doing this question? B, all right. What about the others? So the equation, that static margin equation is the only one that you'll have to use. So first you find out the slope, X bar CG is given to you directly, and then you can find out X bar NP. So what we need to do first is find out the slope, DCM by DCL. How do we do this? A couple of you have given the answer. What about the others? So how do we go about finding the slope? So you have uh, two points, just uh, find out the slope, y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1, straight line, straight equation. So you have, let's just take these two points and then find out the slope. How do we do it? We do uh, just write it CM1 minus CM2 by CL1 minus CL2. Straightforward 0 0.078 minus 0. 0 minus 0 0.65. So I get uh, minus 0 0.12. And now I just plug it into the main equation and I get the X bar NP. So what I get there is 0 0.12 equals X bar NP minus 0 0.28. So your X bar NP, like I think two, three of you have gotten the right answer, 0.4. Right. So for this uh, graph, what is the CL trim value? Can we do CM naught by CL from equation? Uh, why will you do CM naught by CL? 
yes so devansh a 0.65 is the cl trim value correct yes uh, i uh, satvik i am not sure what your question meant we need to find out the slope right yes so, so that is the equation that uh, for cm oh you mean to find out the slope dcm by dcl yes 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 you can do that but you do not have the value of cm you will still need to take the two points yeah so that is exactly how we have found out dcm by dcl right so i have taken two points cm and cl values i have plugged it in and gotten the slope this is the equation that we have used to find out the slope so equation of a straight line you can represent in two ways one is y mx plus c and then you have m equals y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 so those both of those give you the same equation equation of the straight line right so what uh, we have done and what you have said is the same thing yes uh yeah so i think with this we'll end today's session do you have any questions we will do the derivation uh, detail derivation later it will take a long time so i've skipped it for now do you have any questions so guys how was class so for information of you all uh, you have worked with ak goss sir right or you are working with the uh, yes sir uh, so i have okay. i am the ta for his uh, aircraft stability and control course i have been for the past 3 years uh, thus it varies wattages of the subject it is 5 plus minus Yeah, everyone. How was class? Shahid, Alvin, Deepak, Devan, Dhananjay, Ed, Jashwant, Lohit, Pranav, Mohit, Shatvik, Ranjit, Amarth. Okay, so Feb guys, uh, uh, Tanya will be taking problem practice classes, and for May batch, anyways, he will take this subject. So Tanya, next class will be yes. on. Uh, uh friday for you okay so okay. i'll update you on some of our call all right fine all yes right. thank you sir so thank you tanya for your time and support and guys she is igcn currently pursuing phd and she is a pmrf so many achievement by her and i'm very happy she you know coming back and supporting igcn igcs it's great Okay then thank you uh Tanya okay thank see you, you next thank you sir yes uh yeah yes yeah. i'll when we start full course that time we can discuss more on that yeah this question can you address quickly uh, yes, Tanya sir. yeah, yeah uh, so once we do the derivation i think you will be a little more confident with it and once you do the derivation you will see that you won't really have to remember those big equations so those terms will be given to you so those values will be given to you and once you develop a feel for it it will not be difficult to remember it yeah ah uh, let's uh, now can you go to further slides and then we'll wind up i uh, guess yeah so guys for any Uh, support you guys can reach to IGC on these numbers or through mail or website. Okay. Yeah, you. thank you all, and you guys can uh, you know reach us on different social media platforms. Yeah, yeah, we will share the annotated uh, PPT also, so you can uh, share in chat. Uh, uh tanya this ppt okay, you can share in chat just click on that plus sign go go to manage uh, 
presentation and there is an option to share in chat. Please do that. Okay, sir. I think I've done it, sir. Yes. 